All right, hey there. Welcome back to Grinding with Borgman. Uh, hope everybody's doing wonderful today. Got past Wednesday, grinding through the week. Um, so this is episode six of Grinding with Borgman. We're once again just hopping right into it, getting into our exercises, chilling with some jams. And, uh, you know, if anybody hops in, chatting it up with them. So, thank you again for joining us. <clears throat> All right. So, today I wanted to get started on... Uh, I'm going to be working on more, more anatomy and stuff like that. Um, I need to start working on studies, you know... Um, getting, uh, just really refining my understanding of, of musculature and bones and, uh, the interlocking systems, um, and just, you know, keeping those skills sharp, uh, so that way we can carry them over to getting the jitters out for the day. That's why it's important to do warm-ups, so that way you're, because your first, your first drawings are never your best drawings for the day. So I want to, because we were doing that skull at the end of yesterday's episode, I want to start with just like rotating a head around. Because this is the stuff that you never want to work on, the stuff that you need to practice regularly, but, you know, you struggle to make time for. That's why I'm doing this. And maybe that's why you're tuning in, because you just want some company while you do the stuff that is really not your favorite. <clears throat> Brow ridge, cheeks. Let's go. go on the chin, cheekbone, brow ridge. Can't you see? And again, if you're looking for good resources for face and head drawings, um, Hobart has kind of like one of the most standardized books on it, breaking down the planes and the shapes. I actually, uh, I was just on Art Station this morning, kind of just looking through what people have been putting up and posting, and um, I actually found... Uh, it's fantastic um, skull reference. Uh, so, you know, online websites can, you know, like the, some of the art community websites, fantastic resources too. Um, this particular artist, you know what, let me credit them real quick. That's my bad. Uh, art station. Let's see. Recents. Uh -huh. uh. Well, now I feel terrible. Be in history. See, one of the problems was, uh, they're an Asian artist, and I am, I, I'm not, not able to uh, read the script. <laughs> I, 
I, I have no idea what it says. Um, but let me look through real quick. Sorry, already hopping off onto a tangent for you folks. I'm so good at those. So good at getting sidetracked. Waiting for things to kick in for me. <laughs> um, well, I'll look that up and I will give that person credit tomorrow for tomorrow's episode. Uh, rather than waste time with it right now. Even though it's not a waste of time. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways. Just trying to get that reference library up higher, you know. And everybody's faces. This guy's got, got I actually like his kind of lower lip situation going on, you know. Bit of a pouty face sneering guy. We'll get some, oh, not bad. Get some zooms in there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, next week, we're going to have to start working on some animal posing and stuff like that uh, for an upcoming mural project that we're going to be working on for somebody. They want horses. And they shall have horses. What's the hardest animal that I've had to draw? Um, hardest animal I've had to draw. I mean, it's not, there's not really. So I was super obsessed with zoo books as a kid. Um, I, I love zoo books. And uh, they had these great diagrams, you know, with like the musculature of the animals and whatever. Um, and uh, honestly, no animal is really. The hardest animals to draw are invertebrate are going to be like an invertebrate, something that like doesn't have the same, in my opinion, uh, yeah, no, right, zoo books um, that are going to have something that's that doesn't have the same bone structure, like bone organization as humans, because um, I mean, like if you look at like if you look at a dolphin or a whale, and then you look at like a, a big cat or a wolf, uh, and then you look at a human. All the bones are different sizes and in different placements, but they're all connected to the same bones that they would be in any other vertebrae. You know what I mean? So, uh, like, instead of finger bones like we have, uh, whales and dolphins have fin bones but they're in the same shape and like organizational pattern 
uh, they're different shape, sorry, but like uh, different size and shape, but they're in the same organizational pattern as our hands. Um, so it's like everything kind of corresponds. Um, so that's again why like learning physics and anatomy are two of the greatest things that you can learn to like improve as an artist. Because if you understand how things can and cannot bend based on their structure and how things interlock and like the Legos that are living creatures, because it's actually like once you start breaking us down into those parts, you really start looking at things mechanically. You really start looking at things like a sociopath, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, um, if you ever saw the show Heroes, how, how's that for a throwback? Dating myself a little bit there. Um, although not that much. That feels like it was pretty recent. Show me your balls. <laughs> um, but like, if, if you look at, uh, what is show me your bones from? <laughs> is that from something or? If it's like Grim Fandango, I'm not going to know it. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of with skeletons. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you just think like the, the villain in the first, like two seasons of, uh, of heroes, uh, Zachary Quinto's character. Oh yeah. Me being a sociopath. Show me your bones. Um, no, but, uh, Zachary Quinto's character in, in heroes, you know, he's just obsessed with understanding how things work. And you just got to have that mentality. You got to be, you got to be obsessed with understanding how things work. And then that also is going to make you like a better. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's pretty, that's dating me pretty badly. Cause I have to, I had to have been old enough to understand the show <laughs> and it was 20 years ago. Wonderful show, by the way. Although season three, that's when I kind of like got off, got off board. I lo it lost me a bit. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but yeah, you just got to have that obsession with understanding why things are the way they are. And then that's going to make you like a better concept artist and stuff too, because then it's like, then you're not making anything frivolous. Everything like, you know, if you're developing a character, everything's got to have a purpose. Otherwise, what, what, why are they wearing that leather strap? You know, like just because they thought it looked cool. Well, they're probably not a very good adventurer. Um, as opposed to, you know, why are they... that leather strap you know keeps their sheath from bouncing around fashion soul but see uh, okay there you go dark souls yeah let's talk about like the souls like stuff you know it, how what how much frivolous like accessories and and ornamentation like ornamentation isn't frivolous you know, like, like it's a, you know, it can be a sign of, of, of wealth or it can be a sign of, you know, or it can be like an attempt, an intimidation effect and stuff like that. So then that gets into like, the, that gets even more into the character. Like what, what is their background? What is their, you know, like the driving force behind their decision making? Are they trying to like redeem themselves? Is their armor like old and and bust it up, but, like, once was nice and new because they're trying to, like, redeem themselves in some way, shape, or form. But, uh, but yeah, if you look at, like, Dark Souls armor, there's just, like, a lot of extra. Uh, and, uh, and some of it is informed, uh, you know, like, character decision-making, in my opinion, but some of it is also just, like, capes look cool. <laughs> you know? Uh, look at, look at the, uh, Look at the physics engine on our game. Uh, this cape looks really cool on it. <laughs> I, uh, I am.
probably one of the guiltiest for fashion souls. I need my character to look cool. And once I'm done with this, then I can, you know, now I, I got a farm in my new Elden Ring game. I'm doing a playthrough with a friend and uh, I'm behind, you know. He, uh, as, uh, as, as my friends and I coined the term, he was, you know, he's humping the GameCube. <laughs> if we can make that a thing, that would change my life forever. If humping the GameCube became a popular idiom within uh, our current gaming zeitgeist, <laughs> I'd be the happiest man alive. <laughs> and I'm sure all of you can, you know, understand what that means. That's, you know, that's somebody who is just, all they're doing is practicing. <laughs> You know, we're going to bring GameCubes back. Uh, I'm sorry. The first time I ever saw that little, like, like, moving around crawl for the GameCube logo, that was, that was intense. Uh, <laughs> what was it, like, 7th or 8th grade? No. No, it had to be a little after that. Eighth or ninth. But. Yeah. Going to my friend's. Little apartment. You know, well, his parents' apartment. <laughs> he was not like a liberated child or something. See, this is one of the hardest. So we're just gonna. We're gonna break this down into planes. This is like one of the hardest. Directions for me to like find a post. Uh, on the on the CRT nailed to the ceiling of a wall. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my gosh. Kids these days, they're not gonna they're not gonna understand what it was to just hang out in a Walmart or a Best Buy and stand there for an hour and a half just to play the game that you didn't have the system for. <laughs> kids these days. I now, I just said kids these days. Sometimes I forget I'm not 25 anymore. It's like the most disheartening thing. The March of Time. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna... It's just, these cheekbones are just having a rough go of it. I think, there we go. You know what the problem is? In this pose, the head is not nearly as rounded. It's much more, because your head is wider from the side than from the front, generally. I mean, you know, your caloric intake definitely adjusts that. But your skull, I should say, is wider from the, in profile then um, head on or face face first I don't know oh no that's the coffee pot telling me that it's turning off not good um. see you just gotta find it sometimes And that's why it's important to do these exercises, because it's like, this is one of the weirdest looking things. 
There we go. It's helpful to just like practice drawing the face as a mask and moving it around. I've actually seen that exercise done a bunch. Um, but there we go, that's actually. And then this would get extra elongated right here, stretched out, then like that. And then this cord would come down right here and that one would go like that into the, what is that? The bone right above the collar, right above the, the sternum. It's, it's where the collarbones connect. That's actually, it's actually not like one bone. It's, it's two bones meeting. The collarbone twists. It doesn't have a bend in it. It has a twist in it. It's actually like, it's kind of a flat bone and then it turns like that. It's really interesting. Jugular bone, chin bone, jugular bone. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if you have a jugular bone. That would be helpful though. All those people who have died by things happening to their jugulars. Imagine if there was a bone actually protecting it. <laughs> I've always been, since I was a kid, and I like, the first time you learn, I don't know, maybe when it's when you learn about zombies or something, but the first time you learn that, like, if you lose your head, you die, like, <laughs> I get, you know, it, it was, it was a dark childhood, um, no, but the first time that you, you realize that, like, if you lose your head, you die, and you kind of are thinking to yourself, like, wow, this 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 structure is very susceptible. Like, why don't, why isn't my brain in my chest where it would be far more protected? You know, um, <clears throat> I, I've had that thought many times where it's like, why why isn't there like, or or just, you know, if we had two brains. See, here's a great, and then this is where some concept art for like a new new alien species comes in. Two brains. A forebrain and like a central brain and like the forebrain is for like, you know, I think some animals actually do ha have that. Some insects, like really long insects have like a front and rear nerve cluster that operates things differently. But anyways, like a front brain that like, you know, is just for like receiving like ocular information and like olfactory senses and auditory stuff and then like your brain that actually like keeps your heart pumping and like keeps your lungs breathing and like just takes care of everything so that way like you can still live if you get decapitated you just can't you just lose a, a, a majority of your senses you know i don't know somebody call god or who you know whatever alien species designed us you know whatever you believe um Somebody, somebody call the natural selection hotline and uh, tell them that, that that would probably be maybe not a more efficient version of the human being, but, you know, at least a more, uh, a hardier version of it. And what am I doing wrong right here, gang? That's right, I'm shading. I'm shading, but that's because I want to shade. I shouldn't be, but I am. See, now I'm actually too zoomed in because I'm getting that pixelation. And this for like, when you're, for like a broad strokes, like when am I getting into too much detail? This, this is, this is getting to that point because it's like this, anybody viewing this in any real capacity wouldn't be able to tell 
the details in this drawing once you get down to like this level. You know? So it's like this is that area of letting stuff go. But then you think, but what if there's somebody like me who just wants to zoom all the way in and see all the nitty gritty of it? Gotta have the backup brain. Exactly, see? If you have the backup brain, you could go on fighting for another X number of minutes. <laughs> I actually, that's one of my, like, favorite, uh, just random internet posts that you find sometimes. The ones where it's, um, uh, what if humans are actually, like, one of the more terrifying sentient creatures, or, like, sentient forms of evolution, and, uh, it's, like, other aliens cataloging us, uh, and their, their encounters with us, and they're, like, they're, like, watch out for humans, uh, even if you remove the uh, several of their limbs, they can continue fighting. And like, even if um, you know, be wary of their bite, uh, which can cause like infections and stuff. Because we think of ourselves as pretty squishy, you know, in comparison to the, the rest of nature. Understandably so. You know, naturally we think of ourselves as squishy. But that's because we've invented some crazy things to kill each other with. <laughs> uh, you know? I mean, imagine how hard it was to kill a person before guns. Right? No, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, it, it really is just sticks. Like, um, I'm going to refine the materials used for this stick. I might sharpen this stick, make this stick out of metal. I might fire this stick from another stick. Or I'll create two sticks that... Or I'll create explosive material and then use it to blast this stick towards you. You're right, you're right. We're just really good at manipulating sticks. If you think about buildings, that's all a building is. It's just a bunch of sticks. Sticks that have been flattened out. <laughs> Over top of sticks that have been bolted together. And that, in essence, is art. You gotta boil everything down to its most basic shapes. Thank you for assisting in the lesson today. This has been Exo's 49, Exo497's Insights. <laughs> Everything is sticks. <laughs> it's what it sticks all the way down. Sticks all the way down. I try and encourage uh, my family members to have these kinds of thought experiments. And, uh, well, I, I try to incur encourage one of my genius cousins to do it. He's much smarter than me. Studying. Uh, what is it? Like... Uh, the evolution of viral viruses and stuff like that at Princeton. <laughs> time By the time you get to the... That would be great. Yeah, no, and it's just like, it's a 50-page book that is just slowly the degradation of a figure into sticks. I'm into it. I'm into that. Like, see, this is one of the reasons that you gotta love... Uh, drawing digitally because honestly like trying to change 
like trying to to like do the details of a, of the inner ear on a different plane is my goodness what a challenge <laughs> for me at least uh but that's why we're here that's why we're doing this so that way someday it's not a challenge so that way someday people will talk about me maybe the way they talk about Carl Kopinski or the way that I talk about Carl Kopinski <laughs> I um, you know do 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 And this is actually fun. This is this is pretty fun for me, just doing the kind of like doing at least some refining on these face poses while at the same time practicing like moving the face around in space. And this front on front on and three quarters turn are the two that I have the most experience with. I mean, heck, this looks like it's straight out of one of the you know, how to draw comics books that I used to read all the time as a kid. It's so funny. I feel like, uh, it, it, it's funny how in life, you know, like you kind of can sometimes get pigeonholed into things. <laughs> um, I mean, not that I regret it at all because I, I love art and I love drawing, but, uh, like, people find out that you have a talent or that you're good at something and then forevermore that's like something that you do uh, and it kind of like informs uh, like somebody doesn't know what to get you for a gift as a kid and it's like oh well they're good at art so we'll get them art stuff like the amount of art books that I have bought myself very few art books in life uh close to none <laughs> you know uh one hand could count them for sure uh but i have tons and tons of art books because it's like oh well what do you get them well we'll get them art supplies or art books uh and i value them i value them a lot more now than i did when i was younger um i liked to look at the pretty drawings when i was younger uh now i actually like to you know read them and and get the thoughts and uh, ideology behind it um, more so than I used to as a as a younger man as a child and the challenges of See, one of the cool things with Procreate, you just do the mirror. You just put like a guide right here and then, and I can do it in this too, but you know, baby steps. I mean, I just did this, one sec, where we can invert it now, you know, just with the click of a button. I told you yesterday I'd take care of that. Boom, we got that hotkey all sorted out. Uh, so it's nice. For me, one of the things with this stream um, is I think, uh, on things that, you know, could improve my quality of life and my, uh, you know, speed of production while I'm doing them. And then it forces me to research and, and actually, like, correct the problem. Once again, it's a greedy thing. It's for me. <laughs> you all are just along for the ride. Until, you know... You decide to no longer be along for the ride and participate like EXO. I mean, what is he doing right now? Working from home, I'm guessing. Which means he's probably writing code. That would be my guess. Plot twist for all of you. I'm actually real life friends with him. So I know exactly what he's doing right now. <laughs> I just wanted to sound more important than I actually am. 
<laughs> like I don't know what's going on with my viewership. My my one person viewership. <laughs> It's actually uh, funny. One of the markers for like facial beauty in our in our world, like amongst human beings, is facial symmetry. But uh, you can't have too much facial like facial symmetry. You need to, because you need to have one or two minor imperfections. Uh, essentially to kind of like give people a marker um about how symmetrical the rest of your face is like that's why like marilyn monroe's beauty mark you know was such a big thing and why everybody had beauty marks for a while and it was viewed as such a part of her allure um because she had a very attractive and symmetrical face uh but it had like one minor flaw so you don't even want your face to be like when you're drawing a face you don't need it to be completely symmetrical unless you're drawing and you know you're trying to draw somebody who's literally like kind of supposed to be viewed within the bounds of the uncanny valley that being you know there's this concept in art where you can get really detailed and like if this is you know if this if this right here is the uh like a real human face you can only get like so close to it before it drops off and looks uncanny because there's just something that we as humans instinctively know is wrong about something that's too perfect. Uh, it's funny. And that's why when people like, you know, maybe go to the plastic surgeon a bit too much and have like too much work done, it looks really weird to us, even if like it's an expert job, because there's just something off about that amount of perfected pr proportions. Dum, dum, dum. You know, you should feel lucky, Exo, that I am stalking you. Most people, you know, they pay big money for, for that service. I mean, you know, the average viewer doesn't know what I look like, but if they did... They'd be like, look at this guy. He is dancing near that uncanny valley. My God. I'm handsome. That's all I'm saying. Bor Borg Mansum, some might even say. Corny jokes are the best. That, uh, I, there's one, oh my gosh, my, <laughs> thank you, uh, my, uh, my fiance, she, um, she's really good at those, and I hate it, I hate it so much, we were driving down the road one time, and, uh, or driving down the highway, and, you know, somebody, somebody's bumper was on the side of the road, and she just deadpan looks at me, and just goes, oh, that's a bumper. And I've never wanted to strike somebody I love so much. <laughs> because it made me laugh too hard. <laughs> it's 
when you get that illicit laugh. Oh, see, I zoomed out, and this guy, this guy is looking, he's got kind of a, got a, a big old, big old brain case. You gotta thin that out. Um, but yeah, that's a bumper. If you can find somebody whose puns can make you laugh, that's, that's the person you should be with. If they're good at puns. Because nobody likes puns. So, so if you find somebody who's making you laugh with puns, they're quality, man. Though she's also got this really dark sense of humor. Uh, one of my friends down south, she had read a, a sad you know, sad news story, but, uh, of a, a hiker who died here in New Hampshire, and, um, she, uh, she was scared for a second till, you know, she read, because I like to hike, uh, till she read that, um, you know, it wasn't me, uh, and, uh, then, I was, I was telling, telling my girl about this, and, uh, and then she just jumps into, Oh, you know what's dark? I I think you really should have messed with her. Like like we could you're good with Photoshop. We could we could uh you know print out the article and then and then change the name in it and then and then uh say wait to text her back and then say it's your brother and uh and send her the link to the article that we edited and um you know just convince her that I died and then like like this is she's just going down this rabbit hole of horror uh and and uh and then like what was it um oh yeah uh posing as my brother um I'm sorry I've I, I've never heard of you Aaron never talked about you uh you must not have been that good of a friend with him like just and uh you know I find that dark humor hysterical. <laughs> so, uh, to the point where sometimes my friends get concerned. They're like, "Wait, you did what?" No, guys, I'm 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 joking. I'm saying, "What if I did that?" Oh, uh, oh, oh. Well, you know, <laughs> that's twisted. But, you know, I'm kind of in the camp where, and I think I've said mentioned this before, but it's, you know, either, and, and actually I told her about the stream, the, the friend that uh, my girl said I should play the prank on. The horrible, I'm dead prank. Um, uh, the, I just told that friend about the stream. So she might be, uh, she might be listening to this and, uh, and um, you know, Amy, if you are, uh, love you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, but, uh, uh, me and Christine both laughed at the prospect. So, um, now you're never going to know if I'm actually alive or dead until I text you back. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, this got a little off the rails, but, <laughs> uh, And there we go. See, I mean, it's just so much easier front on. I'm so much more accustomed to it than like this guy. But what else? There we go. Oh man, I'm digging this lo fi hip hop once again from. Twitch soundtracks. It's got kind of uh, Professor Xavier going back into um, going back into X Men. Got some Professor Xavier eyebrows there. Okay. Get those eyelids hooded hooded lids. Mm -hmm. 
see that's my thing just going from talking about pretending uh, I died to humming whatever beat it's rolling around in the brain space oh yeah but what I, what I was saying was uh, you know I'm in I'm in the camp of either everything's funny or nothing's funny um, cuz cuz there is humor in everything you know even if like even if it's sad humor I mean, maybe that's just how my family learned to deal with tragedies in general, though. Um, <laughs> the, I still, the the day my, my 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 grandmother died on Easter Sunday years ago. This is years ago. Um, she died on Easter Sunday, and and uh, the the genius cousins I was talking about were still kids at the time, and um, they uh, they. We're kind of, you know, they were being rambunctious because it was Easter Sunday, and uh, and you know it was just a, it, it had just happened, and I was just like, hey guys, could you could you just keep it down a little bit? Uh, and uh, I never forget, my grandfather came out and he just goes, why? She's not gonna wake up, and I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's uh, it's something that has stuck with me for a very long time and that's kind of you know that's just uh that's how some people deal with stuff and uh i think we're just one of those families <laughs> uh. do, 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 do. I have no idea. Doom <laughs> doom, just refining shapes underneath, making raps about doing art and stuff. Don't you like it when I un erase those eyebrow lines? I'm one of those people. Well, no, I'm definitely not one of those people, but uh, I uh, have a kinship with the people who, who make songs about everything that they're doing. Like um, Jessica Day in New Girl. <laughs> Anybody in the stream, if you want to shout out what you're binging, we can talk about that. That's how we consume content now, folks. Everything is just binging. Think about that. We have adjusted our way of... We're, it's no longer a shared... The same kind of shared experience. Food networks. Food shows. <clears throat> I think the in my dad's side of the family, uh, food shows are just always always playing um one of my cousins he is oh just binging food well i mean yeah but you're you're one of those people who you know like y you treat yourself with your food y you know where all the good spots are you know i go over to your place to experience <clears throat> new culinary adventures I mean, you also live in a more cultured portion of the state, too. Over on the coast. Where the money is. <laughs> Try and deny it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I know, right? Portsmouth, New Hampshire, folks. Where he doesn't live there anymore, and I won't tell you where he lives. Uh, <laughs> Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where a studio apartment costs, what, like 
$2,200 a month? <laughs> yes, there's not a problem in this country right now. But it's millennials' fault, so, you know, at least there's that. You can blame us. Hey, Toasty Whopper, how you doing? Day is going awesome, man. Just grinding through these warm-ups before we uh, get started on some of the projects we're working on today. Thank you for joining us. We're just talking uh, shows that we're binging now, since that is the accepted way of consuming content nowadays. So feel free to chime in if you're uh, rocking anything. I've started rewatching Brooklyn Nine Nine myself. <laughs> boom, boom. Binging One Piece? Excellent. I have heard amazing things from many people about One Piece. It just got so long, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stick with it. <laughs> See you in 10 years, right? There we go, that's... <laughs> mm. So EXO is familiar with, uh, with the length of it. I, uh, <laughs> One Piece, I think, see, I mean, like, and that's the problem, I still have, yeah, no, that, it, it, 500, halfway through at 500 episodes, my goodness, well, hey, you know, at least it, it'll keep you, do, what do you binge it on, uh, what, like, Crunchyroll? I don't know all the anime streams. Crunchyroll is the only one I'm really familiar with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Um, I think, it, see, I have a bunch of animes that I still need to get through. I need to finish Seven Deadly Sins. I was really enjoying that one for a bit. Um, and then, uh, and then I, I need to finish Attack on Titan for sure. Yeah, no, see. Attack on Titan. Especially when they... I mean, I feel like it's not its not spoilers at this point, right, people? I mean, it's been... I'm the one who's behind, not you. I, but when I found, when it was basically just Gundams, you know, but with... <laughs> when it was just Meat Suit, it became Meat Suit Gundams. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That filtrum would be more, a little more pronounced. Just. Oh man, did you hear that guitar? I uh, actually just got a guitar this last year for Christmas and I need to because I needed to have some hobbies that are away from the computer since I do so much work on the computer at the same time, you know. Uh, not that I have been very successful in pursuing that hobby, but definitely need to get back into it.
Uh, oh, you're drawing a background, uh, a uh, attack on Titan background, or just a background. You're just you're just you're just grinding with me because you were like, oh well, I'll grind with Borgman. Screw it. Yeah, this guy's drawing. Let's draw with him. Either way. Oh, right on, man. Well, pretty soon. Actually, we're we're at the hour mark. I've just been I've been tinkering with these heads. Uh, you know, just kind of doing the different different poses, putting masks on a sphere. Um, essentially the same face. Uh, but now we're gonna kind of stick with the format that I had started yesterday. You know, this is only episode six, so we're still dialing stuff in. Uh, so feel free to tune in every every day if you want Monday through Friday 1 30 to 2 30 um well 1 30 till whenever now uh because it's like that after lunch break when we're just trying to get through get over the hump in the middle of the day um but yeah so save this one all right and then we'll uh hop into Hop back into that drawing from five years ago that we rediscovered when cleaning up the hard drive. So yeah, this, uh, if you're joining us now, yesterday we started just kind of reworking this. Um, and uh, it's a five-year-old drawings, drawing from, from five years ago. <laughs> you know, two ways to say the same thing. Um, and yeah, we've just been moving stuff around, reshaping it, uh, and uh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna stick with it, uh, get in, improve those habits, uh, you know, improve our own sense of follow through. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll turn this into a print for people who subscribe to Patreon or uh, just up available in the shop. We'll see how it turns out and what we might want to do with it. Um, uh, Looking back on it, um, I remember that I had been very excited about uh, the Warcraft 3 Remastered, because that's one of my longest friendships in life uh, stems from Warcraft 3. And uh, so that, that's some of the inspir that's kind of the inspiration, that opening cinematic. Uh, before the Infernals crash through the sky. It's a shame that uh, Blizzard sucks so hard now. <laughs> uh, so this is me just kind of like celebrating their glory days, I guess. Um, but yeah, so uh, we found this sketch and uh, we're going we're gonna to follow through with it. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, Toasty. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're just refining things and we're going to hop back into this. Um, Let's see, let's look at this skull. <sighs> I'm actually gonna pull up that um, reference fr that I found this morning um, because it was just so good. And uh, we'll give them credit tomorrow um, after I track down the username and stuff on ArtStation. Uh, we do have an ArtStation Pro account. That's actually who my so so like I might have access to like other art, you know, what some other ArtStation members might not have access to, because um, that's actually who I go through for my website, uh, Google for the actual domain name, and then um, ArtStation for the website creator. But I might be shift. I might be changing that. Um, I just don't like their shop as much as uh, some other options I've seen, and I, I really do want to start getting some prints up there um, to sell, especially as like uh, I have less. So like, see, we're already seeing some erroneous um, uh, anatomy. That we're gonna correct here. Creating more of that brow, that nose. 
All right. And actually, I got to pull this down so I can see uh, if there's any any chat going on. Um, do, tick, tick, do, do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. And this is why getting over that you know, me getting over my my refusal to use references. See, I used to view using references as like some form of cheating. Like, like it wasn't my art. It wasn't all from my head. So it was, you know, somehow. And it's like, no, you gotta, you gotta study from those who came before you. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the reason schools exist, Aaron. You know, <laughs> there's... <laughs> Uh, so, you know, if me sharing some of the disillusionments that I overcame helps other artists, please, you know? Boom. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that, that's gorgeous now. We're loving it. Love it, dude. That's like wicked nice, kid. <laughs> My, uh, uh, just, just having moved up, back up to New England from North Carolina, uh, some friends visited, like, immediately. They were sad to see the two of us leave the, the state where we had uh, met them so they immediately visited and uh, were obsessed with listening to New England accents so I was speaking in one for them quite often for a little bit those are some wicked good teeth kid oh yeah dude get those shadows in there get some of that ambient occlusion <laughs> so uh ambient occlusion for those who don't know um the this right here this area that's occluded that's that's it it's not it's not getting light from it's better it's it's better to illustrate it with like a car or something the the darkness the densest shadow underneath a car is at the center of the car uh, and and it dissipates as it gets to the edges, and and that would be the the ambient occlusion. Uh, the light is being occluded by the body of the car. Um, so like the geometry of the head is preventing light from getting in, or the geometry of the skull is preventing light from getting in there. Uh, so if you're ever wondering what ambient occlusion is, especially when you, if you play video games and you see that like turn it on or off. The, that, that's for like, you know, the gradation of shadow based on the volume of an object. Oh, hey, look, that was a pretty decent definition, I feel like. Um, <laughs> the gradation of a shadow based on the, uh, based on the volume of an object. Sounds, that sounded pretty good. That sounded like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> And if there is one thing that is important in art, it's faking it till you make it. That's probably the hardest thing for me. Just like one of the one of the challenges with art, I find is uh, my English writing is kind of crap. So, oh, hey man, it's all good. Thanks for thanks for taking the time to to tune in. Where are you from? If you don't mind me asking. It's 
if you say China, I'll pity you a little bit just because there are so many fantastic Chinese artists uh, out there right now. It's um, it's insane. So I imagine it would be hard to get any kind of recognition there just when the, the caliber feels so high. Although you kind of always know when like somebody from that particular school of art has made something because there's like a, a perfection to it. Oh, Finland. Hey, ah, it's not a problem. Well, uh, although the silent GH in English is a lot of fun, you don't need it for, for, uh, the verb writing. Um, so there you go. And if you feel like I shouldn't help you out, just let me know. But no, dude, you're doing great. I mean, I and everybody else can decipher you just fine, my friend. Um, well, hey, please post, uh, post your, your, you know, wherever you, you post your content up here in the chat and uh, would love to check it out. Um, after, uh, after the stream. So one of the things that we're going to do with this, this is a, a nifty trick, especially with um, uh, that, that you can do with digital art is, um, you know, I'm drawing with, with tones and shadows right now. And even though I've constantly been harping on the fact that you shouldn't do that, uh, you know, you want to start with the basics and, and stuff like that. Um, we've got so much already blocked in on here that I would rather refine with the shadows. Um, but the thing to remember is with shadows, you depending most in most lighting conditions, there is no black. You should never be painting with black. Um, at least that's what one of my instructors told me in, in college. Um, and uh, we can adjust that so we can change the lighting in this scene with uh we can change the lighting in this scene by just well we're gonna do it with the whole thing mm -hmm. uh Well, we can do it multiple. Again, there's so many different ways to do it with, with Photoshop. So like, let's say it's uh, more of a red light situation. Um, running options, multiply, overlay. So then this isn't black anymore. Now it's a brown. And I'll show you that. And even though it still appears black, you can actually see. We'll go. This is real black. There you go, there's the difference between the two. Um, so that's a nice, fun, easy way. And there's there's so many different ways to do that uh, in Photoshop. I was just using, you know, rectangle with an overlay. Uh, and that just will change the entire... So then these can just... I Then I could flatten this, and this could be the shadows and, and highlights in my scene. Uh, and then I go in and put in, let's say... Uh, let's do his skin color now. So what color is this orc skin going to be? It's going to be this green. So then I'm just hitting him with this green right here. Boom, 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 boom. boom. 
and then we don't have to do any kind of crazy color shenanigans. We just hit this one, the same thing, turn it, turn the blending options to overlay, and then we have the proper color for his skin in this lighting situation, which becomes a brown, as we see right here. So yeah. So even though I'm doing something that I wouldn't normally do, uh, given the, the fact that we're... Um, how long have I been doing Twitch? Uh, oh, dude, whatever. Yeah, no, this is this is for... So Toasty Whooper, this is for me. Um, I just started last week because I'm trying to help myself build better habits. I'm working from home now. Uh, and one of the challenges working from home is just staying on task, especially like... I mean, you know, uh, I have some some attention issues. So, like, this is really for me to try and, like, establish good habits, get my daily warm-ups in, and um, help anybody else who struggles with that kind of stuff. Uh, they can just kind of tune it in and put me and my voice on in the background over whatever music I choose to play for the day. Um I'm choosing some some chill jams uh, right now. This is through the Twitch sound soundtrack app, uh, so it's all without copyright issues. Um, but yeah, so this is about a week of Twitch so far. We're on we're on episode six. You haven't missed much. Uh, so um, yeah, man, you can just kind of you can be like, yo, I tuned in right from the start. If I ever do. If this ever does get popular in some way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, no, the goal of it is to just give you some company while you grind things out. Uh, because, you know, getting good at stuff just requires you grinding. So that's what we're all doing here together. Um, you know, whether you're doing art with me or whether you're just uh, writing some code or having to, uh, you know, write copy for, uh, you know, manuals or whatever. We're just here to uh, entertain each other and keep each other company and um, help each other form some better habits. Get some of that rim lighting. One of the things, a lot of people do rim, li rim lighting wrong. Um, uh, Cause it's like, it, you wanna block the shapes with the rim lighting. Um, so like, and I, and I still, I still do it wrong myself, you know, like this is about me improving too, but it's like, so the rim lighting, if he was backlit, if the light source was behind him, he's backlit. So the rim lighting would kind of like come down like this, but we're also drawing on the wrong layer. So we're going to just get rid of all that, um, and get back into the foreground character. And we'll work on the rim lighting when it's more appropriate. Oh, hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I, uh, I am aware of the concept of dead air. Um, you know, you don't want that, that silence hanging over. <laughs> That's what the music is for. So if I stop having something to talk about uh, or nobody's chatting it up, or nobody's tuning in, <laughs> then uh, the YouTube channel will still have some noise. Because these do get posted to YouTube too, so. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and then this actually extends See, this is one of the things that I had noticed when I was looking at their anatomy compared to my own. Uh, YouTube channel name is actually going to be the same as this one, Borgman Designs. Um, yeah. Uh, if you type Borgman Designs in on any platform, uh, you're going to be, be finding me. That's what the last five years has been about is just getting my branding uh, online. So that way, when I started making content, people actually tuned in for um, it would be easy to find. So, uh, that's Borgman Designs on YouTube, Borgman Designs on 
Instagram, on Twitter, on Patreon, uh, and BorgmanDesigns.com uh, for our website. So, yeah, please feel free to check it out. And then, and then that comes down a little bit, maybe a bit more like that, and then that rolls underneath, and this we should actually lighten up a little bit. Oh yeah, there you go. That is a good looking skull. But see now, we recognize that we did not define the brow ridge correctly. And again, this is why even if you Even if you have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, it does not mean you can stop using reference. Uh, especially if you're not practicing every day. Um, which I was not doing as good with my practices um, as I am now since I started the channel. Um, and yeah, the, the channel's improving every day. Uh, you know, we've got the, um, got the intro now, uh, that's something we worked on last week, and we'll be making another series, um, which, uh, I actually, yeah, you, yeah, see, uh, that's, and, and how much, uh, but how many, how many hours did you put into learning those skull anatomies, you know? See, I draw the face, and I didn't do this. I, I haven't been doing my anatomy exercises, but uh, I have been telling people how important anatomy is to learn for art. <laughs> anatomy and physics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do, do, do. And then this has some cracks because this is actually separate bones. 12 hours. Yes, yeah. So right there, that's just, that's 12 hours of, 12 of your 10,000 hours right there just for, from that drawing. So, you know, if you've been uh, doing other skulls besides that one, like, yeah, no, I... I I don't doubt it, my man. Or, I'm sorry, I'm assuming gender. My apologies. Uh, although, you know, that's why I like dude. Dude is very interchangeable in my mind. <laughs> right on, man. And I will remember that going forward. That's my thank you for you tuning in. I'm just going to remember your gender. <laughs> uh, here's this consolation prize. <laughs> right on, Toasty. Doom, 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 doom. Got to get those skull plates in there, demonstrate their this crack. Two of my friends just had babies, and uh, holding them is weird because you can see they're not yet fully formed uh, skull plates, and their pulse just pumping away at the top of their head. <sighs> More reasons I like those, um, those, those alien fan fictions where, uh, humans are these terrifying creatures to other aliens in, in the universe. 
because as babies we are we have we have self-destruct buttons <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> that's another thing I think about like I mean it's 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 a sad thing to think about but at the same time it's like how many people are alive now because of modern medicine who wouldn't have made it past certain ages, you know? Uh, I was at a, at a bonfire and somebody was just talking about like gluten allergies, like, you know, everybody with a gluten allergy before, like at the advent of agriculture and stuff like that, like the only reason we didn't know about gluten allergies was because anybody who had one didn't make it, um, you know? That's just, like, it's just, it's realities that we don't want to think about. <laughs> or, or some, well, some people might not want to think about them. But, you know, it's whatever. Just goes back to the, uh, the, the, it's ridiculous that some people think that they would have had more fun living in a different era or decade. It's, uh, are you kidding me? Like, Yes. I would like to have to swear fealty to a lord or else potentially just have my family kidnapped by roving marauders. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm liking this. Liking this skull now. All right. Work our way down. You got to put those little vent holes. You actually have these little vent holes in your skull uh, for nerves, for like your facial nerves to go through. It's wild. Yeah, everybody's got a hole, got holes in their skull and clusters of nerves go through them. So like this right here, there's like two little holes. And that's where all the nerves for your facial muscles go through. It's wild. Wild stuff. All right. So we'll get into the axe a bit. And then I think that's where we're going to be calling it for the stream. So maybe another, yeah, we'll go till three o'clock here. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, I absolutely love anatomy. Seeing how like everything fits together. Like, like, I mean, I loved Legos as a kid and it's just human Legos, man. Just human Legos. He has a, he had a cavity. This guy had a cavity before he died. It's another thing. Another thing about wishing you lived in the past. Wooden teeth? Come on. <laughs> I know, evolution is super cool. It's a shame, uh, you know. Well, you don't, but it's a shame that we over here are living in a country where we're trying to get rid of science a little bit. <laughs> And you can even reconcile the two, regardless of what you believe. Like, if an, okay, I'm just gonna get a little, cause I, 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 I was raised Catholic. Uh, it, well, you know, it, it, I mean, the dude, the, you know, I, I doubt he, this is an era in which people are good about brushing their teeth, you know? We got swords and daggers, we got axes and orcs. I don't think dental hygiene is high up on the list of important things. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna have some cavities here. <laughs> it's the little details. It's a lived in world. <laughs> bow, 
boom, boom. Um, oh, but yeah, no, no, no. Like, uh, you know, just like a, a little, little minor religious rant. If you're, if you're subscribing to the concept of an all knowing, all powerful, omniscient deity, how come we can't reconcile evolution into that? Like, you know, as a planned point of progress for the world or universe in which, they, you know, they created stuff. I'm just saying, you know, it's an argument for it. It's like... If I put these proteins into this salt water on this planet and then heat and electricity cause those proteins to combine and then those proteins gather together to create the first single-celled organism. I'm just saying, you know, that's intelligent design and evolution coming together. And then we're all getting along. And then pretty soon, no more war in the Middle East. A leads to B leads to C. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it all comes back down to sticks, XO. Exactly. It sticks all the way down. Um... <laughs> <laughs> hey man philosophy is important to be discussed we gotta you know we have to exchange ideas in a meaningful and uh you know intelligent way there's a war on that right now if you don't believe what another person believes then you just get written off rather than you know having a rational reasonable discussion about it Whatever happened to Rat? We need a second enlightenment. Let's go back to the 1600s. <laughs> well, I guess, no, the enlightenment was really in the 1400s, wasn't it? Some history buff is going to come on at some point. Correct me, and I welcome it. Thank you for tuning in. Future history buff. <laughs> I know, uh, me too, and, um, uh, me too, Toasty, and, uh, and, you know, I have some, some friends who are just, like, super into, uh, geopolitical stuff, and just, like, and, and not, not only that, but, like, how the world got to be the way it is, I love learning that stuff, too, even if it can be a little depressing sometimes, because you're like, oh, I don't have really that much control over things. So I might as well make a YouTube channel. <laughs> All right. And here we are winding down as we... See, if I wanted this to be exactly... Exactly... But, no, this is... Uh... This is a weapon of war that has been used by this guy a lot, so it's gonna have some jaggedness to the blade. It's not gonna be properly sharpened all over. And I guess I'm using more painterly tactics than like illustration, Ill illus illustrative, where I'm you know, painting in tones and blocking things in. It's funny that I am, my degree says drawing and printmaking, but I paint more than I draw, for sure. rounding right here nice planes of that there we go it's gonna be like a like a dull pitted iron so there is gonna be some light catching there on the edge but not it's gonna be very it's not gonna be like uh you know, polished steel or anything like that. Um, that's like a super helpful resource that you can find uh, on ArtStation or Blender, honestly, if you um, 
just download Bl Blender's free. Uh, great resource um, if you can, you know, get into learning how to use it. Uh, my uncle, who is also an artist, me and him have given each other assignments due at the end of the month because we both want to learn Blender but and have wanted to for some years but uh, have not been doing doing so hot in, in learning it. So we had to find a way. So yeah, Toasty, if there's anything you want to learn, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, any art pro programs you want to learn and stuff like that, uh, get some friends together and, and give, give each other assignments. Um, or we can give each other assignments on here uh, if you ever want to tune in. Um, so here for the end of the month, uh, I have to create a 10 brush brush pack for Photoshop just because I never really, I, I don't create my own brushes that much. And it's really important that you do because then you're, oh, pen and paper guy, beautiful. I, the, that tactile nature of like drawing with pen and paper, it's, it's, it's my favorite. I'm actually doing a lot of uh, painting on oil, can, oil on canvas right now. Um, but any programs you want to learn, just do some homework assignments. Uh, give, give them to, to each other. But yeah, right now, 10 brush brush pack and gotta you gotta the blender guru. Anybody who does want to learn blender, look him up. Andrew, wait, no, Andrew, what? I'll bring it up tomorrow when I bring up the skull reference that I used today. Uh, so the skull reference, I owe you guys the skull reference and the name of the, um, the gentleman who is known as the Blender Guru, and you can learn how to use that program inside and out from him. Uh, but that's gonna be it for the stream today. Um, so tune in tomorrow where we're gonna be doing our warm ups, grinding through our daily exercises, and uh, working a bit more on this painting um, that we started oh so long ago. Uh, so like and subscribe, check us out. Um, Toasty, thank you so much for tuning in. Have an awesome day, man. Uh, appreciate you tuning in from Finland. Keep grinding, man. Um, and, uh, yeah, check us out. Borgman Designs, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, our own website, BorgmanDesigns.com. Uh, like and subscribe. And thanks for supporting. Thank you. Have an awesome day. And uh, keep learning and keep loving each other.